Nigeria. Um, and, and I think that's a sign in of itself. And there's already a lot of people who are Bringing at the senior home. levels who are coming home. Mm -hmm. um, I think your head of engineering is from, you know, came from Google, right? So there are people who are coming home with experience. Um, and they're already lo and there's local talent as well uh, who can run and manage businesses, right? I mean, so I think once people start seeing, um, sort of the example that Jeremy gave, once people start seeing success from entrepreneurship, and so I've seen examples of companies, right, of people who've been in entrepreneurial companies, gone and started their own business and are doing well, they will start rethinking paid employment, quote unquote, right? Mm. And just say, no, why don't I mm. step out to go do start X, my Y, own start business. my own business? Yes. And I think for investors, then they'll start seeing investable ideas, right, right mm. to start putting money, money into it. And we're already seeing people come to us saying, no, what about this idea that we have, right? Mm. Um, and I think the real opportunity of Nigeria is early stage investment. If I bring the same question to you, do you see, I know Jumia is in Nigeria, but if you are to look now and think of come May, foreign direct investors, heads of uh, corporate organizations across the continent and from the rest of the world, heads of government from across the continent and the rest of the world will be invited to come to Nigeria. What do you see in terms of the quality of the human capital that we have here that you think will definitely inspire them to bring money beyond the conversation they will come here and have? So I think that uh, Nigeria is all over the map of the investors at the moment. It's the center of the attention. And uh, as a matter of fact, we have local investors, but Jumia has managed to attract a lot of investments in Nigeria in order to invest in this country specifically. And Jumia has managed to raise the awareness of e-commerce in Nigeria, in Nigeria and abroad. So when you look at the press that we can get, we can get articles from the Wall Street Journal, from the Financial Times, from the Economist, and newspapers which are read by those leaders will make decisions of whether or not to invest in Nigeria. Then when thinking about the talent, I think that we all agree that talent in our knowledge economies is a key success factor. I look at talent in two different ways. Here, I mean, I've been working in uh, six countries of all. I've never seen, I think, people as committed, hardworking, and street smart as the Nigerians. I think the level of energy is totally unbelievable. And uh, what actually worries me is that I see that a lot of them haven't received from the education, the education, the training that they need in order to blossom. We're using the money that we receive to invest heavily on this talent and transfer the knowledge. On the other hand, last weekend I was at the Africa Business Conference at Harvard Business School. The level of attention and excitement from the talent over there, from all the Nigerians studying abroad at Stanford, Wharton uh, Business School and Harvard, and Columbia Business School, MIT, is crazy. They all want to come back. And they see us, they see Jumia, as a way to come back and uh, give back to the country. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Now let me ask you, um, the WEF, what do e-commerce companies like yours hope to take away from it? Uh, well, I think there are a lot of things that we have to do to, uh, to succeed. Um, some of those things are connected to... So we build our companies not in isolation. We build them connected to other companies also. Okay. We have to do payments. We have to do logistics. Uh, we need all kinds of back-end systems and back-office systems to run our operations properly. I remember when we first started, we'll call some of these back office yeah. companies to talk to, and they wouldn't talk to Conga. And today we're talking to them more and more, and they're willing to sort of deal with us, even as a purchaser of their system. They thought you were too small? But yeah, exactly. Nigeria was doing e-commerce there, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, and that's changed very rapidly. So we do not develop in isolation. There are a lot of very critical sort of business relationships that we have to form um, with people like Tayo to do um, payments, with MasterCard, with Visa, with some of these other players that hopefully will be represented there. So, I mean, it's really an opportunity to build relationships um, and to, you know, there, this is no longer the age of conquerors. Yeah. Nobody, nobody is an island anymore. No company is an island. You only succeed if others around you kind of succeed. So it's, okay. it's a chance um, to build relationships. Just look into the future. Um, how do you see e-commerce in Nigeria in, say, five, ten years? Wow. Um, oh, so everyone smiles. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think, um, if, if I can dare to say, I think virtually every facet of our society would be impacted by it in five years. I think in 10 years it would have disappeared in the sense that we won't notice it. It would just be part of the fabric of our society, of, of our, our life. daily lives. Yeah. I think you'd be buying food stuff. I think by then it would be an, accel it would be an accelerant towards, it would be a catalyst for the integration of West Africa. I tell my colleagues at Conga that the day we know we've succeeded is the day when a woman sitting in Dakar can order a gele from a seller in Lagos and we play the role yeah. in making that transaction happen, happen. and facilitating the movement of yeah. the gele. So I think in 10 years, it's likely things like that will start to happen. Yeah. And hopefully by then, it will be more than 5% of GDP as, um, as it is in China. We may be as deep as 10% of GDP. Not just Conga, I think the entire, all the players yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but, in the, but in the meantime, your operations are within the limits of Nigeria. Oh, yes. I think, you know, for us, we are super focused on Nigeria. Okay. Um, we think uh, Nigeria presents a lot of, Nigeria is a microcosm for Africa. So if you tackle Nigeria, you kind of understand it and you get it, then it's easy, then easier than to kind of go to other countries. Mm -hmm. Is that the same uh, with Jumia? Your well, focus is Nigeria? <coughs> I'm the CEO of Jumia Nigeria. There, we have other Jumias all over Africa. We're now present in uh, eight countries. Uh, but clearly for us, I mean, the focus on, uh, is on Nigeria. It's the biggest market. But we look at other countries also as uh, other opportunities. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, we have to wrap up now. Let me ask you a final question in the area of uh, policies and regulations. Sure. Uh, it's going to be one of the things that will form part of the due diligence of the investors that will come into Nigeria. Sure. Where are we at with that in just a few sentences? Yeah, and so what will be the areas we need to improve on to, to prime us for? This has been a real focus, and I think we've been very fortunate um, to have uh, Minister Mobola Johnson um, as the comms and tech minister for the last few years, because she's someone who truly understands the sector. Um, and I think her private sector experience in Accenture helps. Um, so what she's been focused on is, you know, whether it's on, on broadband, how do we get, how do we, you know, change policies that have, that have really been stifling the growth of broadband, right? So many states in Nigeria have been charging very large right-of-way um, tolls mm -hmm. that prevent people from laying fiber across Nigeria. I mean, I was recently in Rwanda, I was telling some everywhere I went to, in the most rural areas, they have broadband. Um, and here is Nigeria that has the technology, has the fiber, three different lines coming into Nigeria, and we don't have it in the rural areas. So she's been working on that. I think um, Ogun State has actually been the first to reduce its, its toll. I hope other states will follow on that kind of policy, because as you expand broadband, then I don't actually have to depend on MTN. I can just use SWIFT, right? I mean, and then access becomes a little better. So from that perspective, we have that. We have the ICT and, te and uh, telecoms bill that's still in, in, in um, the house and I think that will hopefully make its way through and things around um, allowing for there's actually a bill that's around allowing for recognizing electronic signatures that's a huge deal mm -hmm. for e-commerce mm -hmm. right I mean the fact that you still have to get paper things on paper is very challenging so I'm I, I think policy is moving in the right direction um, we work mostly regulation from, from our perspective we're regulated by the central bank um, and I think the central bank in Nigeria has come out with probably the best regulation around mobile payments and around um, cashless Nigeria and trying to push that forward. And I think what they've come up with actually enables all of what we're saying to happen because you need payments um, f for any of these things to happen, right? And so the framework that they've set up, the idea of agency banking, et cetera, are things that would drive commerce at the end of the day. So in essence, and so you're I think we're in the right path in terms of where we're going. regulation, they are... Uh, doing well? I think they're doing very well okay. on the right path of where we're going. I think we, we actually just need to stay steady, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think as a foreign investor, what you want to make sure is that your regulation is not going to change rapidly mm -hmm. on you. Okay. Right? Not that regulation can change, but it won't change drastically on you. Okay, let me ask you the final question then, Jeremy. In terms of growth opportunities, where are the opportunities for growth? in the sector in just a couple of sentences because we've got to wrap up now. I think the question is where they're not <laughs> <laughs> at the moment in the country. I think that uh, with the talent, the human capital we're building, the growth of uh, the economy, when you actually look at what exists in other countries in the internet economy and what can be created here, I think it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, I think it's in, but in if you have to deal with specifics for somebody who is coming to Nigeria for the first time, where are the specifics that you can say, oh, in this area, we've got loads of developers, or we've got people who have the talent to become developers, or we've got people who have the talent to become um, 
designers and stuff like that. Where are they? So if I were a young uh, Nigerian out of uh, university with an IT degree and I was a developer, I would very much focus on uh, the mobile space and uh, make sure that I know how to create content. And I know how to create content relevant for Nigerians, which is going to make people's lives easier. Okay, so content becomes king again. All right, uh, your final word, Sim? Uh, I guess just echoing this, I think it's a fantastic time to be a Nigerian, especially a young Nigerian. I think we have some challenges, but that shouldn't detract from the great things that are happening in the country. There are some good things. I'm an optimist. I think most young people are. Um, and, um, and I think uh, the role that we're playing here, this e-commerce, which really right now seems like something kind of small is going to be very important very quickly uh, to society. Okay. Well, on that note, we have to say thank you very much to a fantastic bunch of young men, I must say, <laughs> who are here discussing e-commerce, foreign direct investment and inclusive growth, all about the World Economic Forum coming to Nigeria. And Channels Television is proud to say we are the host broadcaster for the uh, entire three-day event. So everything will be viewed on channels throughout the course of those three days. So everybody's got to tune to us to get to hear what the conversation is all about. Thank you very much, uh, Jeremy Dut, who, Dute. Dute. Dute, yes, I got that right. Uh, the CEO of Jumia and uh, Tayo Vyosu, who is the CEO of Paga. And then on the other side, thanks very much to Sim Shigaya, the CEO of uh, Konga. My pleasure. Gentlemen, thank you very much. So Channel uh, Sunrise will be taking a break. And when we come back, we'll have more interesting conversation. But before we do that, let me very quickly mention that our focus on economy has a very interesting report this morning. So Chimeze Obiwagu has that report for you.